Lately I've been having a little bit of problems with my headlights on uh, on my big blue Ford truck here. Uh, I go to turn them on sometimes and nothing happens. And I kind of flick the switch a few times and suddenly they light up and they're okay. So uh, before I head down south for the winter I want to make sure I've got that sorted out. So I'm going to have a look at the headlight switch and see, see what's wrong. So there is a couple tricks to getting this uh, dash panel off and I learned them the hard way before. Um, my oil gauge was just kind of a dummy gauge, it would always go to the center and I was able to find a mod online and insert a resistor on the, on the board in there and make it into an actual gauge that moves around. So here's the tricks. These panels here, one on this side, if you get a screwdriver in there they'll pop off and this one here and they both have a kind of a Torx nut screw. You take those two screws off and then the whole panel will unclip, unclips from the bottom there. But the one trick that drove me crazy is this uh, knob here, the headlight knob. You have to pull it out and then turn it around till you see that slot and then inside that slot is a small clip and there's like a little spring to it you have to kind of get a screwdriver in there and and open that and then the knob will pop off I'll give once I get it all apart I'll show it to you in a little more detail so you can kind of see how it works but it drove me crazy trying to get that knob off you would think it would just pull off or twist off but no there's a tiny little spring in there Okay, well we'll get that panel off and I'll take a look at the switch in there, see what's wrong. So once you take the two screws out, the dash will unclip and the only thing you have to do is the fuel tank switch up here. This plug has to be unplugged. Then you can kind of move the whole thing out of the way and you expose the headlight switch right here. Then there's a uh, one nut here, if you just loosen that nut, there's enough room back there to push the switch back and bring it all out to have a look at. So here's a closer look at the faulty headlight switch. And you can see this connector here actually wiggles pretty good. It's all burnt up. This one here doesn't look too good either. And uh, another thing I noticed is this part here is my dimmer and this coil has come loose so that's like the dash light dimmer and it wasn't working properly either now I can see why so that'll be changed out I um, thought I'd give you a closer look at this the knob where it clips on here this is the tiny little clip it sits right in here and sort of see where it goes into that slot. So when you're taking it out of the car, you have to get in there with a screwdriver, bend that up so that the, the knob will come off. So here's my new replacement unit. Nice and shiny new. So the only thing I have to do with that is I have to reuse this shaft and put it into the replacement unit. Now to get that shaft out, on the back there's this small knob right there. So you have to depress that and then the shaft will slide out. Just like that. And on the new one, slide in there and she'll click in. So yeah, that's a little trick you need to, to know when you're changing that shaft out. Otherwise you'll be yarding on that trying to figure out how the hell do I get that out. Okay, so we got the new switch ready to roll, and I also was able to get a brand new Molex plug connector, and I'm going to have to go in and splice it in place. There's nine wires. Let's go. That's the 
the hardest part of the job is just splicing those all together. And you could use butt connectors for that job where I'm actually going to solder them. I like to have a nice solder connection. I don't have to worry about it oxidizing or anything. So yeah, I'll get to work on that. Oh, one more quick thing. Um, if you're in Canada, I picked these up at Lord Co., which is a popular uh, parts store in Canada. This was $42, and this one was $20, so about $62 altogether. I'm sure in the U.S. it's probably a little cheaper than that. Most things are. But uh, they were in stock, so I think it's a pretty common problem. A lot of trucks use the exact same switch, different models. One nice thing about having the Ford truck is parts are usually readily available and usually a good price too. So you can see the plastic Molex connector is pretty uh, badly charred up so I'm going to replace that and uh, I'm going to have to splice in a new, a new connector. This is my new connector. Um, the wires are similar color but not exact so you're going to want to make sure you uh, made up the right wires. You might want to make yourself a diagram or uh, do a little uh, video or photograph beforehand. <laughs> okay, I'll get to work. Okay, that wasn't too bad at all. Um, there was a couple different colors, you know, slight variances in the colors, but I was able to use the old one and just, uh, it's all keyed and able to match the colors easily that way so that I don't cross wire anything. So now we'll uh, put the switch in and sew it up and see what we got. Okay, moment of truth. Connected up the batteries, ready to roll. Woo! Looking good, looking good. Let's see, oh yeah, my dash light's dim nice now. Nice. Interior light. Yes. Check the high beams. Yeah. Signals. Looks good. Okay. We'll go check the lights outside. Sweet, looks like we're back in business. We're ready to roll. She's a pretty truck. <laughs>